Hey everyone, Garfum here with a guide on the Firebug Wizard. This build uses 5 pieces of Firebirds and 2 pieces of Veers to capitalize on 2 bugs with the Firebird set, resulting in massive damage while having under 300,000 sheet damage. Before digging into the build, I just want to point out that Blizzard is aware of these bugs and they have said that the current implementation of the Firebird set will stay in the game for the duration of the season and no action will be taken against accounts intentionally abusing these bugs. This means it is safe to use this build and your account will not be banned and your clears will not be removed for using this build. Whether or not Blizzard made the correct decision on how to handle this is another topic entirely, but since they are allowing people to use it, I decided it's only fair to let everyone know how to use it. So let's jump into the build, I'll go over the gear and skills first, and then I'll go over exactly how to play the build because there are very specific things you must do and if you don't do them the build will not work at all. Okay so starting off at the top of the screen here with our general stat priorities you want to prioritize cooldown reduction, percent fire damage, intelligence, and vitality. It's also important that you do not want any critical hit chance, critical hit damage, or area damage on your gear or paragon points. Alright, moving on to the gear, starting with the sets. You'll need 5 pieces of Firebirds, and you'll be running Ring of World Grandeur in the cube to give you all the set bonuses for Firebirds. And the important bonuses are the 4-piece and the 6-piece bonus, which both have a bug associated with each of them that makes this build function properly. So, reading the 4 set bonus, dealing fire damage causes the enemy to take the same amount of damage over 3 seconds stacking up to 3,000% weapon damage as fire per second. After reaching 3,000% damage per second, the enemy will ignite, burning until they die. Now what it actually does is when dealing fire damage, let's say you are in Archon form and you hit them with your fire blast, it's supposed to deal the exact same number that you hit on them again over 3 seconds. What it actually does is it takes that number that you hit on them then it recalculates all your bonus damage again onto that number, which gives you a huge amount of damage over 3 seconds. So say you hit for 5 billion, then it'll take that 5 billion and it'll get all your damage multipliers again and apply them and it'll do that amount of damage over 3 seconds. The other important part about this 4 piece bonus is after reaching 3,000% damage per second, the enemy will ignite, burning until they die. So normally, playing Firebirds, under normal circumstances, you don't see this huge increase in damage because as soon as you hit 3,000% weapon damage, the set functions normally. But if you're able to make that first hit on them deal less than 3,000%, then it will do that 3 second burn, recalculating all your damage. So I'll explain more about how to do that later, but that's sort of why this does so much damage. And then the other bug with the six piece set, your damage is increased by 40% for each enemy that is ignited. Elites that are ignited increase your damage by 2000%. You can only have one elite damage bonus active at a time. So there's a bug where if you're fighting a blue pack and you ignite some of the blue pack, but not all of the monsters, and you just leave it there and you run away, it will keep the buff on you forever. So this helps get your huge dots even more damage. So once again, you'll be needing five pieces of Firebirds. The only piece being required for a certain slot is the offhand source is required. The other four pieces can be put wherever you can get them. They don't really matter as long as you have five pieces on in total and you'll have Ring of Royal Grandeur again. And then the other set that we'll be using is Veers. So for the two set bonus, Archon gains the effect of every rune. This is just to help mobility, help deal damage, all that. Because when you're in Archon form, you gain stacks that increase your damage. This works with that dot again, giving you even more and more damage. And this allows us to take the fire rune and still be able to teleport around, so that's nice to have, and you can slow things. Moving on to the weapon, you'll want Aether Walker, 
Teleport no longer has a cooldown, but costs 25 Hour King power. This is obviously so you can spam teleport all over the place to help get around, and you'll also be stunning things. Next, for rings, you'll want Obsidian Ring and the Zodiac. Reduce the remaining cooldown of one of your skills by one second when you hit with a resource spending attack. So this is paired with Teleport and Arcane Torrent, both of which will reset your cooldown when you hit with them. And you want to reset the cooldown on Archon so you can try and stay in Archon form as much as possible because that's when you're going to be dealing damage. Next, the other ring you want Hero Halo of Arlis. And your ice armor now reduces damage from melee attacks by 50 to 60%. Automatically cast Frost Nova whenever you take 10% of your life in damage. And this is obviously to help keep you alive, keep you tankier, because you're going to be dealing enough damage in these griffs with this setup. You just need to worry about staying alive. So next up are the Bracers. Ancient Parthon Defenders, this pairs with your Teleport, which is going to be stunning things, your Halo, which is going to be freezing things, and Zyz, which is also going to be stunning things. You have a lot of things to stun the enemies with, and this is going to further give you more damage reduction. Moving on to the Amulets, there's a couple of options. I like Eye of Etchlish because the secondary reduces damage from ranged attacks by a lot. You could also take an immunity amulet to any of the elements if you really wanted, or a hellfire amulet. And I'll talk about the extra passive you can take when we talk about passives. And lastly, the belt. You want Fazula's Improbable Chain. You automatically start with 41 Archon stacks when entering Archon form, and this is to help build up those Archon stacks, so you want to start overlapping your Archon stacks every time you enter Archon form, and this just helps you get there faster. It also helps a lot on Rift Guardians when you're not getting a lot of Archon stacks anyways. Alright, moving on to Legendary Gems. You're going to want to take Bane of the Trapped to increase your damage against slowed enemies. You're also going to want to take Gogok of Swiftness to increase your attack speed and dodge chance. But more importantly, you also gain cooldown reduction with Gogaka Swiftness, and you want to get as much cooldown reduction as possible. And lastly, Zystone of Vengeance. This increases your damage and also gives you a chance to stun, so that just all around helps you get a little bit more damage out and also proc your Ancient Parthon Defenders and help keep you alive. Next, for your weapon, you're going to want a Diamond to increase damage against Elites. You don't want any crit hit damage, this is why we're taking a diamond. In your pants and chest armor, you'll either want diamonds for all resist or amethyst for vitality. And in your helmet, you'll want a diamond for cooldown reduction. Alright, moving on to the items in the cube. For your weapon slot, you're going to want to use the furnace. Increases damage against elites by 50%, that's pretty straightforward. For your armor slot, you're going to want the Swami. The bonuses from Archon stacks now last for 20 seconds after Archon expires. This is really important, so you can get two Archon stacks in the same Archon form. So after you use Archon once and it expires, those stacks will stay there. Then you try to get back into Archon form as fast as possible, so you can have two sets of stacks going at the same time to increase your damage. And then for the ring slot, Ring of Royal Grandeur, obviously, since we're only running five pieces of Firebirds and we want to get the six set bonus. Alright, moving on to the skills. You'll want to take Arcane Torrent with Static Discharge. This is just an Arcane Spender to reduce your cooldowns faster with Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac, and that's to reduce your cooldown on Archon form so you can stay in Archon as much as possible. Next, you'll want to take Magic Weapon with Deflection. This is to give you some more damage, as well as a little bit more survivability. You'll also want Archon with Combustion. Since we get all the Archon runes, we're taking Combustion to, t to change Archon to Fire Damage. And this is when you're going to be dealing all your damage, is on Archon form using your Q Fire Blast. You don't want to use your left click or right click, because those will deal over the 3000% weapon damage very quickly. 
Next, you'll want to take Ice Armor with Crystallize. This pairs up with a lot of different things to give you more survivability, and you take Crystallize, so when you take melee attacks, you would get increased armor, which wizards t usually lack armor because they have a lot of int. Next, you want Teleport with Calamity. This makes Teleport into a spender that deals damage, so it will work with Obsidian Marine the Zodiac. As well as when you teleport to things, you'll stun them, proccing ancient Parthon defenders, and you can move around faster with Aether Walker. Next, familiar with Ancient Guardian. This just gives you more survivability. As for the passives, you'll want to take Blur. This is straight up damage reduction by 17%. Evocation, reduce all cooldowns by 20%. Again, you want as much CDR as possible. Next, Unstable Anomaly. This is your cheat death. When you receive fatal damage, you instead come back to life. And this is to, you know, obviously stop you from dying, which is actually very, very bad with this build. You never want to die during the Grift. And then Audacity, you deal 30% additional damage to enemies within 15 yards. And some alternatives to Audacity, if you need some more survivability, is Galvanizing Ward. This will give you a shield after not taking damage for 5 seconds. Or Dominance, but I think Dominance isn't as good. However, if you have a Hellfire Amulet, you could take Dominance as your 5th passive or Elemental Exposure if you want more damage. On to the Paragon Points. For core, you'll want movement speed first, then maximum arcane power, and then vitality and intelligence. And since these don't max out, you want to balance them between having a large enough health pool and having enough resistances. So for doing 70s and 80s, I recommend at least 700,000 life, and then you can put the rest into intelligence for all resist. But as you go higher and higher, you'll need a bigger and bigger health pool. So right now, I'm working towards pushing a 90, and I'm at around 1 million health. That's kind of comfortable. I might change it into more vitality. That's something you just gotta play around with yourself and see what you like. But balance between the life and all resist with those two. Onto the offensive. You want cooldown reduction first, then attack speed and you do not want any points in critical hit chance or critical hit damage. Onto the defensive, you want life first, then armor, then all resist, then life regeneration. For utility, you want resource cost reduction first, then life on hit, then gold find, and you do not want any area damage. Now let's go over how to play the build, because like I said, there's a very specific way to play this build, otherwise it will not work. So once you enter the Greater Rift, you're going to teleport around until you find a blue pack. Then enter Archon form and use the beam on one of them to ignite them with the permanent dot, granting you 50 Firebird stacks. Make sure that at least one of the blues is not ignited with the permanent dot. This dot is visualized with a reddish-orange symbol above the monster's head. Once you've ignited at least one of the blue pack monsters, stay there for about 3 seconds. If you leave too fast, your stacks will fall off. So after, about stay after staying there for about 3 seconds, you can teleport away up to the next big area of density or to the next pack. Now you can start killing things, and to do this, you're going to use Fire Blast skill in Archon form once every 3 seconds to burn the monsters around you. You must make sure to wait 3 seconds so the monsters stop taking damage from the dot before hitting them with Fire Blast again. There's a visual representation of fire on mobs that are still burning, you should not hit those mobs again with fire damage until they stop burning. This is especially important when fighting elite packs because you do not want to ignite them with the permanent dot. If you do ignite another pack, you will lose your permanent 50 firebird stacks, as well as making that pack impossible to kill unless you run far enough away to take the ignite off of them. If you lose the permanent stacks, you can find another blue pack or the original blue pack and ignite them again to regain the permanent stacks. Obviously, this is not ideal because it wastes time. Just a note, permanently igniting trash mobs will not take away the 50 stacks, but the mobs permanently ignited do effectively become unkillable. So the game plan, once you have 50 permanent stacks, is to hop around in Archon and hit mobs with Fire Blast 
once every three seconds to deal massive damage. I recommend when in Archon form to bounce between two or three groups until they are dead. So you hit the first group with Fire Blast, teleport to the second group, Fire Blast, then return to the first group if it's still alive to Fire Blast them again. Jumping between groups of enemies fills the three second downtime where you have to wait for the burn to expire. Whenever you're not in Archon form, use Teleport to stay safe and Arcane Torrent to reset Archon's cooldown. Another thing to be aware of is Firebird's two-piece bonus which drops a meteor if you take fatal damage. This meteor can ignite the permanent dot, so try not to die on top of a blue or yellow pack. If you blow through both cheat deaths and die, you will lose the 50 Firebird stacks and you'll have to find another blue pack to get them back again. As for fighting the Rift Guardian, you must be very careful. If you die or permanently ignite the Rift Guardian, in most cases you will fail the Grift. Dying will lose your Firebird stacks and you'll have no way to get them back, and igniting them with the permanent dot means you can no longer apply the massive burn damage, making the Rift Guardian impossible to kill. So that is everything about how to play the Firebug Wizard. To compare this with other wizard builds, this is currently in first place in North America, clearing a Greater Rift 103 but there are other wizard builds that are on par with it, so it's unclear which build will be the best clear, but it definitely can compete. And unlike other builds, however, it's very easy to gear for since you want to keep your damage low, so almost any pieces you find will work. For example, all the gear I'm wearing was collected in a couple hours, and every piece I'm wearing was the first drop I found of that item. So that's all for now. Let me know in the comments what you think about the Firebug build. If you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate a like and make sure to subscribe to see more videos. Thanks for watching everyone and have an awesome day.